Hi and welcome to my first ever video tutorial. I thought for this first video I would go through a typical modeling scenario with a typical problem and a solution I have for that problem. And at the end for a little bonus I'll give you a quick rundown on how you can optimize scenes that will be using uh, generators and splines. Uh, to give you a quick introduction, this scene is a real world scene. I'm working on it for a little archfish scene. Currently still procedural. You can see I can still move everything around. Um, but if you're like me, you will hate sharp edges. And it's the first piece of advice I give to anybody who's asking how do you make photorealistic rendering? The first thing to do is make sure your models are actually up for the job. And that is basically the easiest thing to do is get rid of your sharp edges. And um, generators and splines are guilty of having sharp edges. As you can see, it's like all the way around. Um, so, what the problem is here is that modeling is tends to be very destructive and create working on a small area can actually spread this destruction throughout a large part of your model which is going to create huge problems later and a massive headache in trying to fix it in fact it will probably be so big you can't even fix it so I want to introduce you to something what I call um, containment modeling, which is essentially creating geometry as like a buffer zone, like a somewhere to work in, like an area to work in. Rather than working on the object, you create an area to work in. And you can see this when I just let me just collapse this to a spline. You can see the spline, there's our points. So Basically the problem is what I'm trying to add to my spline here is actually a curve. This tangential curve going from the the perfect circle radius up into my straight. Because I want to get rid of this um, sharp edge here. Now in Cinema's spline tools we do actually have a tool called chamfer. But as you can see the destruction is enormous. It kills my uh, circular radius and becomes useless. And what I was saying about um, um, errors that get spread across your model, and this is happening here, it's actually going right up until it finds the first point. And this is just not good enough for this particular model. So if I go back, then as I was saying, you need to create, sometimes you need to create geometry to actually work with. And in this case, we're using splines, so that's going to be a point. So using the knife, all I do is actually just create an extra point. And now, whenever I use the chamfer, you can see that it's restricted just to this area and now the rest of my radius is left perfect. I still have a perfect uh, circular radius but there are a couple of points you need to be careful of because this, yeah, these are at, at the end of the day bezeers with handles is that you can see here when I turn my sweep back on I get a mess and these typical horrible um, artifacts this is um, useless. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of that quickly. If I click, pick both of these splines, these points on this spline, you can see this point here has actually two handles, and this has one, um, meaning the this handle, extra handle here that's leaving, is actually going to be basically the same as this one, uh, the tangent. I mean, so. And this one, this short handle is actually stretching too far, creating this little bow in here, which is our main culprit. So if I go to move, which is E on the keyboard, and double click on the point, 
I can actually get this points position or this handles position in space now how you get this now you get this box with like hundreds of numbers and how do you know which handles which one is it the left or the right now in this case the box that's then we left is actually a small number and the right is actually a large number even though if it's minus it's still larger than this and as you can see here my left handle is actually longer than my right handle so in this case um, my left tangent is actually my short handle so if I reduce these to zero which effects effectively kills the tangent handle so now I've only got two handles but I've got a perfectly linear piece of spline here which allows me to quite easily and just do this by eye move up and all of a sudden I have a nice smooth chamfered rounded corner to my spline so that's how I use the containment method with splines when if you want to do something to a spline try and you know contain that area don't let it or don't let the your modeling method then affect the rest of your spline uh, okay so there is one more little thing I would like to um, talk about while I'm here while I've actually got a generator and a spline in the scene and that is polygon count a lot of people especially me like to render these days with uh, GPUs and unfortunately GPUs are pretty limited in the amount of uh, memory on board and that's why we like to keep the amount of polygons and objects in the scene to a minimum but unfortunately cinema's default uh, values for um, splines is it's, it's a little bit too high for my liking and the other problem is the default viewport settings make it not possible for you to be able to actually see how many polygons you've got so for example you know, if I select my sweep I go into object mode instead of actually seeing the the mesh or how many polygons I actually just see this outline and uh, yeah this is this doesn't really help me at all see exactly what my object how it's subdivided and even if I go to um, go to display and then go to Garou shading lines normally that's actually set to isopalms which again doesn't tell me exactly how my object is subdivided which is why you should always go to wireframe with the object selected and there you can see just how far your object is subdivided in this case it's just crazy that's because the default subdivision of a circle spline is just far too high well not only is it far too high it's also set in my opinion wrong a circle should be uniform because it's a uniform shape and also the number is also very high and um, and also if you're going to build a scene if, if an object is going to be like that small over in the background somewhere it doesn't need a subdivision of 8 because I mean it's crazy you can you can pretty much bring that down to two or even one and to make it look smooth you can actually play with the fong angle and then all of a sudden over in the distance you've still got a smooth um, spline but with a fraction of the amount of um, polygons so for example this has now uh, 350 polygons whereas our default go take it back is oops the default is 3000 which is a huge difference and if you've got a scene 
with many many sweeps and other, and other generators which a lot of MoGraph files do have these days and, and also normal sort of archvis scenes they'll be using generators all over the place and all of a sudden you can actually just by being careful of how you subdivide your splines you can actually reduce sometimes half not just the, the, the actual physical file size in megabytes but also just the amount of polygons to be able to fit it onto your graphic card so that for now will be it for my first video um, so we've got a little bit of modeling containment and some scene optimization I hope you like it um, please leave a comment um, you can contact me on Twitter or on, on the um, YouTube uh, message section and um, I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.